Our kitchen is the heart of our home. How orderly it is can make or break our day. If you're a busy mum, it's hard to keep kitchen clean with daily kitchen activities. But there are certain everyday habits that if you follow daily for a few weeks, they will naturally become part of your routine and your kitchen will be well kept at all times. So don't throw up your hands in despair when your sink is full of dishes. Instead, establish these daily habits that will help you ensure your kitchen does not become a disaster zone. I will be sharing tips on reducing visual clutter while we do our daily kitchen chores and not deep cleaning tips. If you are interested in deep cleaning, then I have two other videos on my channel that covers this topic in detail. I will link them in description box below in case you want to check them out. Now let's look into few habits that you should inculcate to have a neat and sanitary cooking space at all times. First, begin your day in a clean kitchen. Have a regular routine to wind up your kitchen properly each night. You do not want your today's chaos to haunt you tomorrow morning. So make sure to end the day on a clean note. Few things I like to do as part of my night cleaning routine are Clear the countertop so you have clear space to work with next morning. Clear the dishes off the sink to keep pests away and to avoid dishes drying out. Start the dishwasher so you have clean dishes for next day. Dry the sink area as wetness will build mold and foul smell. Most importantly, don't forget to clean the floors. If not mop, at least a quick sweep. When we cook, little crumbs fall onto the floor. That is perfect invitation for those little pesky pests to party in our kitchen while we are sleeping. I like to wind up my kitchen and then turn on my robot vacuum at night while we settle in the bed. A little bit of help is always welcomed and robot vacuums work independently without any human assistance. Also, I like to turn this little fellow at night as they are quiet, they do not disturb, kids are not running and screaming that robot is approaching and floors are relatively clear of toys. There's so many robot vacuums available in the market, so I keep showing you different kinds so you can decide for yourself which one would you prefer whenever you decide to buy one. So, what's special in this particular one? Well, this robot is Dreamy Z10 Pro, which has both sweep and mop functions, but certainly focuses more on sweeping as it has this big bin where the dustbin empties itself after cleaning. So, you do not have to worry about emptying the dust tank for around 65 days, which is almost two months. Now, that's a long time to forget about sweeping the floors. The dock uses circulation of the air to suck the debris out of the tank and transfer it to the bin. I will leave a link to this vacuum in the description box below for you to check it out. Start charging. Start auto empty. Second, empty your dishwasher first thing in the morning. Dish clutter is the biggest eyesore for the kitchen and the reason why it happens in first place is that we do not have proper system to tackle dirty dishes. Empty the clean dishes first thing in the morning so you have space for dirty ones. If you hand wash your dishes, clear the counter of the clean dishes to make room for more also so that you do not get mixed up between dirty and clean ones. This step is crucial as otherwise the dishes will pile up in the sink which is the start of the kitchen disaster. So have dish clutter in control. I have two side by side sinks. My system is to clear countertop of dirty dishes and fill one sink up. And once it's almost full, then I will transfer it to the dishwasher. This way, I do not have to wash every time a cup or a bowl is soiled, rather tackle them in few batches throughout the day. If you do not have a regular routine for starting the dishwasher, then you do not have a regular routine to empty it, followed by no routine to clear soiled dishes. So train and discipline your mind to do certain things on certain time so you can run on autopilot mode. Third, 
Clean and disinfect countertops regularly. Since the kitchen countertops are high touch surfaces, they become soiled and germy quickly. So you should wipe them with a microfiber cloth damp with a mild cleaner especially after cooking meals. Fourth, use spoon rest. Always keep a spoon rest or a small plate to place your spatula while cooking rather than putting it on gas top or the kitchen platform directly. This will leave a hard to remove stain, so follow this habit. Fifth, have a food station. It's a good practice to have a wooden board in some corner of your platform to keep hot pots and pans on it after cooking. Once cool, you can transfer food to a serving bowl and wash the pan. Having a wooden board will keep your gas cooked up free for other use or if you simply want to wipe it clean. Also, you can see how much food has been cooked and what's left, so you can plan accordingly. Sixth, transfer food to serving bowls. Once you're done using the cookware like pan, pressure cooker, transfer the food to a serving bowl and immediately wash the cookware. This ensures the leftover food is not dried out, making cleaning harder with each passing time. And also, it's available for next use, so you do not pull out another pot or pan. Same goes with kitchen tools too. Use them, wash them, wipe them and keep them to the designated place so that they can serve you next time. 7th. Put things to their place. When you're working in the kitchen, I recommend working clean. This means always put back things from where you picked, rather putting them on the kitchen platform. If we all excel in this one habit, our kitchen will always stay clean. When we are in rush, especially in the morning, we tend to put things in the first available spot, adding to the visual clutter. 8. 5 minute quick declutter. If your kitchen does get out of control, which let's get real guys, it happens to all of us, especially when we are in rush in the mornings. If you come across such situation, stop. Stop whatever you're doing and do 5 minute declutter. Pick as many things as you can in this 5 minute and you will be surprised you could achieve so much in simply 5 minutes. 9. Cook slowly. If we cook slowly, we are in more control of our actions. We can certainly place things from where we picked up. We can wash small tools and utensils then and there. We can wipe the countertop keeping them clean. So just practicing slow cooking will help you keep your kitchen clean. But to be able to cook slowly, you need to cook organized. So planning what you will be cooking will help you cook slowly as you know exactly what you need to do. Cut vegetables beforehand like night before. Planning and mapping your cooking process will help you cook slowly and organized, keeping your kitchen clean and mess-free at all times. 10. Remove stains, spillage and spots immediately. Adapt the clean as you spill policy to immediately remove the stains, spills, dirty spots when you see them. After cooking meals, wipe the stove, countertops and other areas with splatters and stain. You can use a damp or dry microfiber cloth as per your requirement to clean oily messes, dust, debris and dirty spots before they become too stubborn to remove. 11. Have quick routines. Always have a quick post meal routine if you are eating on the dining table or on the floor like we Indians prefer to do. Always clear the dishes, wipe the surface and make it available for next meal. Tackle the dishes as well. Wash what needs to be washed, rinse and stack in the dishwasher and so on. If you break down the task into small bits then it's easy to manage and never becomes overwhelming keeping your sanity. Twelfth. Deal with leftovers immediately. If you let the leftover food sit for hours, there is high probability that it will turn bad. So get into the habit of dealing with the leftovers immediately. It will save you time and energy to cook fresh meals every single time. 13. Wash the sink every night. A dirty sink looks grimy and smells terrible due to excessive development of bacteria and mold. So make sure to wash it with dishwashing liquid and warm water every night after dinner and also after doing the dishes. Never leave dirty dishes in the sink overnight. It will keep pest away as well. 14. Overdoor hanging trash bag or trash can. I have been using this overdoor hanging trash bin and I highly recommend it. 
I have two of such bins and I keep rotating while one is in the wash. But I use it all the time to peel the veggies to empty the sink leftovers and once it is half full, I empty it in the trash bag, give it a quick rinse and stack in the dishwasher. Also, I do not keep a dustbin at home. This is the only trash bag I use and I empty it in the council bin every evening and replace a fresh bag for next day. This practice helps avoid fruit flies from spreading and cross-contaminating the surfaces of my home. 15. Use wait times in between cooking. When we are cooking, we all have in-between wait times. Use this time efficiently. Do not swipe up your Instagram, rather wipe up clutter from your platform. You can do so much in these in-between wait times if you wish to. And once you're done cooking, you would have done most of the cleanup as well. Challenge yourself to get more done during this time and don't waste time on social media. 16. Keep countertop clutter free. If you have your knife set, spice dabba, blender, canisters, everything on the platform, it's time to declutter. Find them a new home as keeping countertop clutter free makes wiping the surface easy. Cleanup is easier when you don't have to move things around. 17. Have organized pantry. If you have a dedicated place for each item, then you know where to exactly put it back. This saves you time to find it next time you are searching for it. So having an organized space helps you keep clutter at bay and keeping kitchen clean. Also, if you have disorganized stuff on your countertop, just putting them in order and wiping the space makes the area look neat and clean. So if you have stuff randomly scattered, put them in order and you will see instant difference. 18. A simple trick to keep gas stop clean. Using a splatter screen or a lid every time you cook helps to keep the oil splatters away from the cooktop. Once cooking is done and dusted, all you need to do is to simply wipe the cooktop with multi-purpose cleaner, leave it for few minutes to soften the grease and wipe it off using a microfiber cloth. Hardly takes 2-3 to three minutes but saves you elbow grease later. 19. Change the cleaning rags Make sure to rotate the cleaning rags and kitchen towels in and out. A good rule of thumb is to grab a fresh rag once a day, but more importantly, trust your nose. If you leave your clothes damp, they will start to smell. That should tell you germs are multiplying and it's time to throw the rag into the wash. 20. Don't forget the floors. Having the floors swept or vacuum makes a huge difference. Your kitchen cleanup would be incomplete without this step. Quickly go through, pick up the things, give the floors a good sweep before you call it a day. Or even better, invest in a robot vacuum that can do the job for you. So there you have it guys, 20 cleaning habits to always keep your kitchen stick a span. If you haven't been following any of these habits, don't stress. Don't try to follow them all together. Just pick one or two habits and work on them and discipline yourself until they come naturally to you. Then proceed with few others. They say it takes about 4 weeks to develop a new habit before it becomes your behavior. So give it a try. I used to be very messy worker myself in the kitchen years ago. My worst habit was not to put things back to where I picked it from, creating a lot of clutter in my kitchen and eventually I would feel overwhelmed and spend hours cleaning the mess that I could simply have just prevented. Over the past few years, I have trained myself to overcome bad habits one by one and I am working very efficiently in current lockdown situation. So it's never too late to start building a good habit. There is a saying, if we are persistent, we get it and if we are consistent, we keep it. So first, let's be persistent to acquire good habits, discipline ourselves and then be consistent and make these habits naturally part of our self-being. I will leave you on that note and I shall see you in my next video. Bye for now. Even if the sky is falling down.